22. Calculate the standard cell potential for each reaction below and note whether the reaction is spontaneous under standard state conditions. And then we have this reaction right here. We got Na solid plus LiNO3 aqueous yields NaNO3 aqueous plus Li solid. Now, we want to find that standard cell potential and just know that the standard cell potential is a E cell. Now, it's going to be specifically a E uh, notch cell, that little degree sign up there. Just means that we're under standard state conditions and they did say that we needed a standard cell potential. So, we're going to get it. Now, just know that cell potentials, E cells, are always linked with oxidation reduction reactions. So I have to know that this is an oxidation reduction reaction. And oxidation reduction reactions are always occurring because there are a change in oxidation state. There's a change in charges. But I'm looking at this here and I'm like, where are the charges? Show me the charges. There are none. So I have to go find them. Now, just know that when you got compounds, especially ionic compounds, I got a metal and a polyatomic here. So I have aqueous and I have another aqueous compound. Aqueous ionic compounds are going to dissolve in their solvent, right? Water. So that's where you're going to see the charges. They're secretly in here. We just got to find them. Well, just know that, you know, NO3 is a polyatomic. We've seen this how many times throughout our whole chemistry journey. NO3 is chillin', and lithium is the metal. Over here, nitrate, the NO3 is going to stay the same, and sodium is going to be by itself. Now, you could do these charges a couple of ways, right? You can take your subscripts and crisscross them back up. Keep in mind, remember, you only got one nitrate. Um, it's a one-to-one, -one, so the lithium would be a plus one, and the nitrate would be a negative one. Same thing goes for the sodium. It's a one-to-one, -one, so plus one and minus one. Um, so now, oxidation reduction has to be a change in charge. And before we even go further, I'm just going to bring this down just to show you that now I'm bringing everything down. This Na was just chilling. This is now equals, and the... The Li is now down here as well. Okay. Now only focus on things that change state or change charge. But if I look at this nitrate, NO3 minus went to an NO3 minus. What happened here? Nothing. That's a spectator ion. That goes bye-bye. And now we can see that I have Na... And now it became an Na+. Plus. Remember, elements by themselves, without saying anything else, if you have no charge in the upper right-hand corner, that means you got a zero. So this changed in charge. And maybe what I'll do is, eh, I guess, I guess we'll go like that. And then on the flip side, you have Li plus one, and then it just becomes a, a lithium. Same idea happens here. No charge in the upper right-hand corner. That's a zero. So these are going together. Okay, but now what is that going to do in terms of E cell? Let's now figure out what the formula is for the E cell. It's this equation right here. E cell always equals the cell potential of the cathode minus the cell potential of the anode. More specifically, it's cathode minus anode. Cathode minus anode. And remember, the cathode is where reduction happens. You're always gaining electrons, so you're becoming more negative. On the flip side, anode, oxidation, you're losing electrons, so you're becoming more positive. So we just have to figure out, is the sodium going to be the cathode, or is the lithium? Well, that's when we get down to see the charges. The sodium went from a zero charge to a plus one. I say to myself, did I become more positive or did I become more negative? Yeah, I became more positive. So more positive means it's got to be the anode. So I know that the sodium is going to be the anode. Now let's just make sure. The lithium went from a plus one to a zero charge. Am I becoming more positive or more negative? 
Yeah, I'm becoming more negative, and that's the cathode. So the lithium goes here. Now, where are we getting these values? Well, that's what I did. I went to the back of the textbook to find out what the actual values are for the sodium cell potential and the lithium cell potential. Now, just know if you're using this formula, cathode minus anode, if you're using a minus, you do not have to change any numbers in the back of the textbook. Just makes it easier. So E cell equals the lithium one, which is a negative 3.04 minus the sodium one, which is a negative 2.71. Let's find out what that E cell is. Negative 3.04 minus a negative 2.71. That looks good to me. That's a negative 0.33, and that's in volts. So here is your E cell. Now we just have to take that information and say, well, is it spontaneous or not spontaneous? That all comes down to the sign of the E cell. If you have a positive E cell value, or greater than zero, the reaction is spontaneous. But if you got a negative E cell value, the reaction is non-spontaneous. Here, clearly, we have a negative value. And negative values means that the reaction is non-spontaneous, which means that in order for this reaction to occur, I just need some additional source of energy, maybe heat, jack up the temperature, to get this running. And that's it. What'd you think? Thank you for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel, gets the word out there. And the channel wouldn't be here without you guys. So thank you so much. Thank you for the kind comments as we progress in this YouTube journey. And I hope all the best for you in your academic journey, whether you're studying for chemistry or any other subject. Check out the channel because we also have physics and math videos on the channel at the moment with more subjects coming your way in the future. So hopefully we can help you with more subjects. I will be talking to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.